Beaufort County officials are still warning about an increase in vehicle break-ins. A former Beaufort High School principal surrenders his certificate and the body of the Wimby Creek boater was found. We'll bring you those details. We have all that and much more. Keep watching Beaufort. Your news starts now. Thanks for joining us for the Beaufort News. I'm Jessa Jeremiah and here are your local headlines. Beaufort County Sheriff's deputies and police are still warning about vehicle break-ins and the numbers are climbing. Beaufort County officials have responded to more than 400 vehicle break-ins so far this year and last week more than 40 cars were broken into in Beaufort alone. In many cases vehicle doors were left unlocked and more than a dozen firearms left in plain sight. Sheriff's office is urging anyone who leaves their vehicles to keep them locked and keep items out of sight. A former Beaufort High School principal has surrendered his administrative certificate. Dan Durbin resigned in 2012 after admitting that he has changed over 200 letter grades for 33 students. The South Carolina Board of Education voted to accept the agreement last week. The certificate included a secondary principal, secondary supervisor, and superintendent. However, Durbin can still apply for a South Carolina teaching certificate. Some parents are still concerned about the fire on a Beaufort County High School bus recently. The event is being called an isolated incident by the school officials, but the fire erupted on a bus on Highway 17 last week while the girls' high school volleyball team was returning home from a game. Although parents are still troubled by the incident, officials say the buses are always inspected. More than 40 businesses showcased their best recently at the annual Business to Business Expo. The expo, which is sponsored by the Beaufort Regional Chamber of Commerce, ranged from small local businesses to several large businesses, including Hargrave Wireless, the University of South Carolina Beaufort, and several insurance companies. This year marked the fifth year the expo was held. Beaufort County has a new District Teacher of the Year for 2013. Hilton Head Island High School English teacher Kirsten Carzies was awarded the honor Friday morning along with the keys to a brand new car. Students and staff celebrated with a surprise parade followed by an a cappella performance. All in all, 30 of Beaufort County's top teachers were recognized. And Friday was the first day school districts started sending 7th graders home if they did not have the Tdap vaccine. In Jasper County, 28 7th graders had to leave school. Hampton County sent three students home. And Beaufort County had a half a dozen students who still needed the vaccine. As a reminder, only students with a medical or religious exemption can opt out of the Tdap requirement. In other school news, parents in the Lowcountry are also concerned with what's going to happen with the overcrowded school system in Beaufort County. They met with the Board of Education recently to discuss the possibility of combining schools or building new schools. If they are combined, it would bring fifth grade back to the Ladies Island Elementary School. Officials say plans are still in their earliest of phases. A popular charity has just launched its 2013 annual fundraising campaign. The United Way's mission is to get proper food and nutrition to many families throughout the Low Countries. The goal this year is to be able to help over 31,000 people in our local communities. At the campaign launch, the United Way announced that this year's goal is $2.3 million. And here is what's happening around the state. A Lexington County man and his girlfriend were arrested Friday for a three-month crime spree. The crimes that targeted private homes and businesses netted more than $25,000 in stolen property. 31-year-old Jean Carroll Rutland Jr. of West Columbia was charged with six counts of grand larceny, while 35-year-old Rachel Ann Hobson was charged with accessory of a felony and obstruction of justice. Both are being held at the Lexington County Detention Center. Two officers seized about eight grams of meth from a lab in West Columbia recently. Four people were arrested Friday after the Lexington County Sheriff's Department went to investigate a lead. Deputies detected a strong chemical odor coming from the home and saw white smoke coming from a bedroom window. Charges were given for manufacturing meth and possessing meth with the intent to distribute. All four are being held at the Lexington County Detention Center. 
If you'd like additional information on these headlines, you can reference the media sources you see listed on your screen. Also, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Coming up, we have the details on the Wimby Creek boater story that's making headlines. That's what's hot off the press. And in our business report, we'll find out how new home construction is doing in Beaufort County, a story you won't want to miss after this. Low Country Real Estate is located in historic downtown Beaufort, home to one of the most attractive real estate markets in America. We've been providing high quality service to our community for the past 24 years. Whether you're interested in buying or selling residential, resort, or commercial investment property, our professional sales staff can help you with your real estate needs. Please visit LowCountryRealEstate.com for details on all available properties in Beaufort and come see how the Low Country becomes you. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. First, we have our hot off the press report with WHHI's own Kayla Logue. Welcome, Kayla. Hi, how are you? I'm good. So we've got some tough stories to talk about. Let's start with this Wimby Creek boater story. I understand the body of the boater that went missing last week was recovered. So what information can you share with us? Well, yeah, as we mentioned last week, the search was still continued for the body of Carl Mulligan, who was flung from his fishing boat due to a steering wheel breaking. And last Thursday, the body matching Mulligan's description was found by the sheriff deputies in the Beaufort County Mosquito Control aircraft, only about four miles from where he was last seen. An autopsy is being done to determine the cause of death. Okay, so how about any friends or relatives? Does anyone have anything to say about the accident that might provide more information here? Well, the family has not been reached for comments after the body was found, but they did make some comments actually describing him as a person. And earlier in the week, they said that he was selfless and a smiling man who was always in a good mood. So it's saddening that he is actually gone. All right, Kayla, thank you for an update on that story. Unfortunately, the next story is just as tragic. I hear that a Beaufort man is being accused of rape. So tell us what's going on with this story. Well, according to the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office, Lewis Anthony Chisholm, a 48-year-old man, is charged with criminal sexual conduct after raping a 14-year-old girl. And the girl actually happened to be a daughter of his friend. Okay, and do you have any information on how this happened? Um, he actually pulled up to the girl in his car when she was waiting for her school bus. And instead of taking her to school like he said he was going to, he took her to, her home, to his home and sexually assaulted her. He then took her to school and the young girl immediately told a friend who notified a staff member. And he is now being held for prosecution in the Beaufort County Detention Center. Okay, I can't believe that story. That's a, such a sad one. Thankfully, we have time to squeeze in very quickly a positive note. There's a home, the old Commons home, that's being repaired by volunteers. So real quick, give us an update here. A um, falling tree limb damaged a home located in the Old Commons neighborhood, and that happened actually earlier this year. And the owner is physically unable to fix the damage, so volunteers this past Saturday helped to repair it. Okay. Thankfully, we can end on a positive note, a much better story. Yeah. A tough hot off the press this week. Thank you so much, Ms. Kayla Loke. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Joining us for our business report is WHHI's own Will Wareham. Welcome, Will. Hey, th hey Jessa. How are you? I'm great. I'm glad to have you on today. Now, there's some great stories that I want to talk to you about. First of all, let's talk new home construction. Good news is it's on the rise in Beaufort County. Can you give us an update? Absolutely. So uh, according to local government records, uh, Beaufort County has issued 465 single-family residential permits through August of 2013. Uh, so that's on pace to top the 557 permits that were distributed last year and already more permits that were issued um, in 2009. So this new construction is helping to uh, add inventory to uh, help ease the demand of uh, buyers and it's also helping to create new construction jobs um, in our area. Um, so, so far this year in 2013, the state of South Carolina, not, not just the Beaufort County, but the state has added more than 4,500 construction jobs in South Carolina, uh, according to the uh, South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce. Um, so that's good news all the way around. Uh, for more information on the local real estate market, be sure to check out real estate, the real estate news on WHHI-TV. Okay, we will do just that. 
So all good news. Now speaking of new construction, I understand a new fire station is under construction on Ladies Island. So what can you share with us? That's right. So um, the ladies, there's a new Ladies Island and uh, St. Helena fire, de fire station being built on Ladies Island Drive uh, across from BBT there. Um, Lather Construction won the, uh, was awarded the contract for site prep. So they've begun prepping the site. Um, uh, for the new fire station that's going to replace the existing fire station that's out there um, in front of the Ladies Island Airport. Um, and we're expecting the new fire station to be open in quarter one of 2014. Okay, also good news. Unfortunately, it can't all be good news. I understand a local restaurant is closing its doors, so real quickly, tell us which one. That's right. After nine years, uh, Barbara Jean's in Ladies Island has closed its doors. So uh, we appreciate their contribution to our community and wish them well. Um, but unfortunately, uh, this particular location did not work out for them. So um, farewell to Barbara Jean's on Ladies Island. All right, thanks for the report. That's Will Wareham, and that's your business report. When we return, we're checking in with the Beaufort School theater teacher of Beaufort High School, and we have our very own Kevin Libby, who goes on location to Beaufort Academy. So stick around. Allison Ramsey Architects believes that good design is a result of a collaborative effort between the architect, the builder, and most importantly, the client. The low country lifestyle incorporates all aspects of the home, and good design reflects the character of a family. No longer items of luxury, good design is standard. Let us help you craft a home built with everyday living in mind. Allison Ramsey Architects, creating sustainable, timeless design. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. Our first newsmaker is Miss Lorraine Fess, who is the theater teacher at Beaufort High. Welcome, Lorraine. Thank you. So I want to talk to you about anti-bully or anti-bullying campaign, I guess you could call it, um, and bully play. So how did this start? What was the inspiration behind this campaign, if you would? A couple of years ago, my son got bullied on the bus by a middle schooler. They allowed elementary schools and middle school kids ride, to ride the bus together. And um, he was threatened on the bus because he was sitting in someone's seat. And he didn't tell me about it for like two weeks. I didn't find out until another parent had told me about the situation. And I felt very helpless. I didn't know what to do. Um, so I did a lot of research online because I didn't know what to tell my child about bullying. I didn't know how to handle it. And then like a normal theater teacher, I went to my class and told my students about what happened just to ask if bullying was still around because as an adult, we don't see it. And if we do, we think it's, oh, it's part of growing up. So I talked to them about it and I didn't realize how big it was. And so um, we had a lot of conversation and they decided that they wanted to do something about it. So I suggested, well, let's write a play about it. So we did. We w um, went through a lot of class discussions. We did research online. Um, and then we came together of this idea of how are we going to stop it. The big thing is tell someone. When you see something, say something. And so from that, it just grew. And we wrote a play that is primarily, it was me talking to the audience, but my theater students doing a whole series of skits to take you through the thought process of a victim and why bystanders should say something. I'm not asking bystanders to fight. I'm just asking them to say something, to tell an adult, to tell the bully to stop, or just to look at the victim and say, I got your back. Come on, let's get away from them. And so that's what we were looking to do. And it was a big hit. And because of that, my son felt um, inspired, felt safe. And I figured if I can help my son feel that way, then I want to help other elementary school and middle school kids feel that way. All right. Well, thank you so much for that story. I'm sure it's an inspiration to other students. And we can catch that at the Beaufort High School Theater. Miss Lorraine Fest, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. 
Next, our very own Kevin Libby caught up with the coach of Buford Academy. We'll see what he has to say during a special Libby on location. Jessa, greetings from Merritt Field in Buford. I'm Kevin Libby on the gridiron covering this week's matchup between the Buford Academy Eagles and the Generals of Cathedral Academy. Entering the game today, it's impossible to ignore the imposing presence of the Buford Academy Boosters. Local vendor Upper Crust has provided free pizza and the dominance on the BA Custom Grill cannot be ignored. Before making my way to the field, I caught up with some BA cheerleaders. We're all a really big family and we talk about everything. Tell me about your goals for the year, ladies. Right now, since we're not competing, we're just here to spirit on our team and just pump up the crowd. Spirit on and pump it up. I like it. Ladies, who's going to win the game? As the game got underway, it became apparent this would be a high-scoring affair. Like Eisenhower himself, these generals were on the assault. Quickly racking up an impressive 48 points, the generals stormed, building the highway to score a city along the way as the offensive capability cannot be denied. Who writes this stuff? On the other side of the ball, it was the Eagles soaring through the night, posting an impressive 54 points, approaching the final two minutes. I asked Athletic Director Michael Millwood about his heart health. Not, it's not good. I'm just going to take a long time to get sleep tonight. Tell me about first-year coach Brock Manet. Will I dominate this pizza pizza? Well, he's, he's just a very good offensive coach, and uh, he's got some good kids, got some good talent. A lot of speed. Ren Robinson is, is phenomenal. He'll go over 1,000 yards for the season tonight. In his fourth game, he's going to go over 1,000 yards for the season. It's the first time that, that I've seen the kids really believe no matter who they play, they could win. And B.A. intended to win. One minute to play, Cathedral Generals in white, pressed to the goal line, and oh my goodness, he, he could catch the game-winning catch and no, denied, like your bank loan. Tell your friends. Jessa, this was incredible. Coach Vinay, what did you think about this amazing goal line stand? That's Ashton Guess, and he is new. He just came out this week. I threw him out there in the middle of the second quarter, and he had a big interception. So I found me a cornerback, and now we are a complete football team. I knew we had it all the way. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I knew we had it. I just, I just you know, wanted to just stop him at about the six-yard line and make it exciting for the fans. From the gridiron, I'm Kevin Libby, WHHI Sports. After the break, we'll give you the scoop on entertainment coming up in Beaufort, and we're joined by Councilman Joe Lee, who has our Port Royal report, so stay right there. Welcome to the town of Port Royal, located along the Intercoastal Waterway and Battery Creek in the heart of South Carolina's Lowcountry. One of America's leaders in small town new urbanism, where visitors enjoy shopping and dining, and residents appreciate the tranquility of a quiet walking village. Come experience the hospitality and growth of a beautiful coastal community. Come experience the opportunities of Port Royal, South Carolina. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. We have Councilman Joe Lee here with our Port Royal Report. Welcome, Joe. Uh, welcome to you. Good to be here. Now, I meant to ask you about this last week, actually. We ran out of time, but I want to know about the street music concert series that is continuing on September 28th. So tell us who's going to be on the stage. Yeah, this uh, Saturday on the 28th, you're going to get to hear some great Memphis blues. Uh, our last concert was jazz. This week it's blues, and it's under the uh, live oak trees on Paris Avenue, um, Saturday night the 28th. All right, and any other details you can share with us about that? Well, as, as usual, it's a free concert. It's uh, open to everybody. Uh, bring your coolers. It's, on the, it's between 9th and 10th Street on, on Paris Avenue and in the village of Port Royal. Uh, we encourage you to bring coolers and, your, uh, and some snacks and uh, sit on the chairs and enjoy the music. Uh, starts at 6 o'clock, so that uh, you should be out before the sun goes down. All right. 
And now switching gears a little bit, um, I want to ask you about the Port Royal Rookery. I understand it's changed seasons, of course. So what can you tell us about how the change of seasons has affected the rookery? Yeah, Jesse, we're really pleased. We've had a great rookery season, which is when the birds breed and, and raise their uh, juveniles. Now the area uh, that's right there on Paris Avenue has turned into a roost. So the birds are generally gone during the day. They fly out as far as five miles to feed during the day. And then they come back in the evening to roost where they're protected uh, on an island that is uh, surrounded by fresh water. So if you want to see a, a bunch of birds, you go to the uh, wetlands uh, after about five o'clock and you'll see thousands of birds coming back to their roost. Uh, then uh, during the winter some will be leaving and then we'll have the spring rookery season again. Um, really quick, just a couple seconds, I want to ask you who is um, going to be in the running in the municipal election that is coming up, if you can share that with us. Sure, real quick, uh, we have an election coming up in November. Uh, we have two council seats that are open. Uh, it's a four-year term. We have two incumbents running, uh, Mary Beth Hayward and Vernon DeLoach. We have a newcomer running, uh, Lee Helena, and then we have a write-in candidate, um, uh, Lundy Baker, who is signed up. So we'll have a really interesting next uh, six weeks or so. All right, Joe. Great stuff. Thank you so much. That is Councilman Joe Lee with our Port Royal Report. Thank you. Next, we'll go to our Out and About Report to learn more about the Short Story America Festival and other Buford Entertainment from Low Country Weekly. They are on location with that story. Thanks a lot. Well, the second annual Short Story America Festival and conference is right around the corner. The fest brings together readers, writers, and teachers from all over the country. And this weekend in Buford, the 26th through the 29th, there will be readings by authors and writing workshops, book signings, the launch of Short Story America Volume 3, and two great receptions. The schedule is loaded, and the All Events Pass will get you into everything, including the opening night reception at the historic Lewis Reeves Sam's House downtown. There's still time to register and get your $50 All Events Pass. Just visit Short shortstoryamerica.com. And there's more literary news. Well, the annual Friends of the Beaufort Library Fall Book Sale returns this weekend. It's a big deal. From Friday through Sunday, bibliophiles, bargain hunters, and everyone in between will descend on Waterfront Park for the sale. FOL members get a first look at the books during the preview hours on Friday between 10 and noon. The sale opens to the public starting at noon that day and runs until 6. Saturday's hours are six to, or 10 to 6, rather, and Sunday from noon to 4. Now, the Friends of the Library estimates there will literally be thousands and thousands of books for sale, fiction, nonfiction, biography, history, cookbooks, literature, poetry, children's books, gardening cookbooks, outdoor, coffee table books, everything you could possibly imagine. And the prices, hard to imagine too. $2 for hardcovers, $1.50 for trade paperbacks, and smaller paperbacks are just 50 cents this year. So children's books start at 10 cents each. Don't miss the book sale and bone up on your winter reading. And also Cynthia Zeiss's new exhibit, The Soul of Silk, is just opened at the Beaufort Art Association Gallery at 913 Bay Street. A trip to China first filled Cynthia's senses with the many wonders of silk, specifically the flow of paint and dyes on the fibers. Now she creates her scarves and they've become very popular in the boutiques and galleries of Beaufort. In her new exhibit, each framed silk painting is paired with a one-of-a-kind silk scarf. Now the works are on display through October 26th. The public is invited to meet the artist Friday from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And that's about it. Get what's out and about in the new issue of Low Country Weekly magazine or click on lcweekly.com. Back to you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. Please join us next time.